Hi, it's Adam from Months and PCs, and today we're going to be showing you how to install Windows onto your new computer that you've just built. We're also going to be showing you how to update all the drivers and a few programs that we use to then test the system to make sure everything's working properly at the end. So make sure you stick around to see that. So to start off, you're gonna need a few things. You're first of all gonna need your computer that you've built. You're gonna need a monitor, keyboard and mouse, obviously, but you're also gonna need a USB flash drive. Now this needs to be a minimum of eight gigabytes, but you can pick up 16 gigabytes quite cheaply. I'll put the link in the description for one similar to this. And this is what we're gonna to use to put our Windows installer on so that we can install Windows onto the new computer but you're also gonna need another computer or laptop that you can put the Windows installer onto this to start with. So let's show you how to get Windows on here. So first of all, you just need to plug your USB stick into your computer. It does need to be a minimum of eight gigs that you've got on there already. You then need to go to the Microsoft Downloads page. So we've clicked on, soft, gone to Software Download, clicked on Windows, we're then clicking on Windows 10 because that's the version of Windows that we want, and we want to download this tool. Now this part of the process isn't gonna be the quickest, so you do need to be patient um, and have a little bit of time to get this all sorted out. So next, you've gotta accept the license agreement, so do have a read through that, and then you can click accept. Okay, so what do you want to do? Now we don't wanna upgrade this PC, we want to create an installation media, USB flash drive, DVD, or ISO file for another PC. So click next on that, and we then need to choose what language, architecture, and edition you wanna go for. Now what it will do is it will take the current PC that you're on, but you can untick that and choose the options that you want. So we're United Kingdom, I want the Windows 10, and I want 64-bit edition. Now do make sure you make note of which edition you're getting, because when you buy the key for Windows, you need to make sure whether you're buying the 64 or 32-bit. Most PCs now will just be the 64-bit on there. So we then click Next, and we're going to put this onto a USB flash drive, and it needs to be at least eight gigabytes. You can burn this to a DVD or CD, but most computers that you're gonna be building these days aren't gonna have a CD drive built into them. So it's a USB flash drive, and then we click Next. You choose the drive that you want, and then click next. So what that's now done is put onto our USB drive, if we click on it here, it has put all of the stuff on here that you need to install Windows onto your new computer. Now, if we leave this open, we are gonna put a couple of extra files on the USB stick, just in case we need to update anything before we get the computer connected to the internet. So first of all, I'm gonna go onto the motherboard website, and then what you wanna do is go onto the support section, which will then give us a driver and utilities. So for drivers, we are Windows 10 64-bit. Now I'm gonna download the chipset drivers there, and I'm also gonna go onto the BIOS and download the latest version of the BIOS. And we're gonna put both of these onto our USB stick. So I'm just gonna create a new folder, which we are going to call motherboard. And in here, I'm gonna export all of the files that we've just downloaded for the BIOS into this section. So extract all, browse to where we want to extract them, and that is gonna be, if I go to this PC, to motherboard, select folder. So that's now extracted those onto our USB. Um, and I'm also then going to do a new folder, um, which will be for our chipset driver. I'm gonna do exactly the same. Back to downloads, extract all, browse, and we're gonna be putting this into chipset driver. Okay, so that's now on here, and we can see on this drive, we've got our motherboard, chipset driver, and then all of our Windows stuff all within here. So we can now safely remove this. We then need to get our other computer connected up to the monitor, the keyboard and mouse, and then I'll show you how we can install it. So we've got our new computer ready. We've got our boot drive on our USB stick. Now when plugging in the USB drive, I'd always recommend plugging it into the back of the motherboard rather than the front. Just in case you've missed one of the connectors or anything, plugging it straight into the motherboard will mean that you're less likely to have any issues. So that's all plugged in. Now let's turn it on. 
Now when I'm doing this, I do tend to like to use a HDMI cable as opposed to a DisplayPort cable. You do sometimes find that hardware has a bit of an issue with DisplayPort. And again, it's just minimizing any risk of having issues to start with. Once you're all booted up, you know, Windows is working fine. You can then play about with the cables and things like that. So this is the first screen that we've got and we actually need to get ourselves into the BIOS. So we push F1 and this then takes us into the ASUS BIOS screen. So on here, this then shows us what memory and everything that we've got. So we have got a, this is our motherboard, our processor, which is the i5-10400S, so that's showing. We've got memory at 16 gigabytes of memory, DDR4, 2133 megahertz, currently running at the moment, but we can turn on XMP which just means that it runs at its 2400 rather than 2133. So you get the slightly faster speeds on that. Fan profile, so it's showing what speed the fans are going at at the moment. We're not gonna play about with the fan curve on this just yet, but what I am wanting to do, so brute boot priority. So if we go to the boot menu, we wanna boot it from the USB drive. This then means that it should pick up that the Windows is on there and start the Windows installation. We then have our Windows setup. So language to install is English, United Kingdom, time and currency, you can change those, input, keyboard methods, so let's go next and let's install now. Okay, so it then comes up with activate Windows. What we're actually gonna do is we're gonna get everything all installed and then we're gonna activate Windows at a later point. So for now, I can just put that I don't have a product key and we are gonna be Putting the operating system, we're gonna do Windows 10 Home times 64, and it's this edition. Now, if you are getting a key for Windows 10 Pro, you need to make sure that you install the Windows 10 Pro, or if it's an education license that you've got, you need to make sure that you're installing the education. Windows 10 Home is the cheaper of the options, so that's the one that I'll put onto most of our systems, unless it's requested otherwise. So. We'll click on that and we'll click next. We then have to accept the Windows operating system license. So have a read through that. You can then click next. So we can either upgrade, install Windows, keep file settings and applications or do a custom install. Now here, we're gonna do a custom install. We're gonna choose where we want to install this. So this is our uh, M.2 SSD that we have. So it's 465 gig available space on there. So if we then click new and we are selecting the whole drive apply windows might create additional partitions for your system files so that's okay we've now created a system area and a partition that we're going to be able to install windows onto so click next and this is then going to install windows to that new partition that we've created within the drive so it's at this point while it's all installing you want to go downstairs grab yourself a cuppa and we'll meet back here in a moment So once your computer's restarted a couple of times, it just goes to the setup for Windows. So we are in the United Kingdom. It's the right keyboard layout for us. No, we don't want a second keyboard layout. Now, this is where you can connect to a network if you wish, but we're not going to at this time. So I'm gonna click, I don't have internet. And the reason for this is I don't want the system to start doing updates before we've got everything loaded in. If the system's trying to do updates, it will slow everything down. So I wanna make sure we can get to Windows and then we'll do all of the updates that are necessary for the system. So continue with limited setup. So once you've completed all of the questions that Microsoft wants to ask you, it just finishes the installation. And there we are. We've jumped straight into the home screen on Windows. Now I'm actually quite surprised it's not come up in a strange resolution. You might tend to find that the computer defaults to 720p, so everything is particularly large on the screen as opposed to going to your monitor size, but this one seems to have taken the, uh, the settings correct. So we now know that we are in Windows, everything is all working. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna plug in my ethernet cable. We're gonna then update the system. 
Okay, so we've now plugged in the Ethernet cable and you will see that it will start trying to download if you've got um, particular keyboards and things, it will start trying to download the software for those. If we click on the start menu, we're then gonna type in the search update and we're gonna check for updates. So this will come up on the Windows Updater. So you'll see straight away you've got all of these here that need updating. So these are gonna download, we'll leave these to download. Once they've downloaded, it's then gonna ask us to restart the system so that it can install. Okay, so we've just come back and we have got a pending install. So let's click install now. Now it has got one of the Nvidia displays. Don't panic if your screen goes black while it's doing anything to do with the display. It's just updating the driver and sometimes that does happen. We are due to do a restart, so let's click restart now. And this is just installing some of the updates that we've just done. Okay, so let's log in. So if we do exactly the same again, so we go to search and we're gonna search for update, check for updates. And although there were none last time, let's click check for updates again. I believe it might have done all the updates we needed to. Yeah, so we've done all the updates we need to on there. So next we need to make sure that we've got the right drivers for the NVIDIA. So we want the 1650 Super drivers. So if we go to NVIDIA and go to drivers, we can then select the type. So it's a GeForce. 16 series, it's a 1650 Super, it's Windows 10 64 bits, the game ready driver in English. So let's search. And then this is the latest game ready driver. So let's download this. Download. And what this is also going to try and install is the NVIDIA software. Now I would recommend having that because it will update your drivers automatically as they come in or at least alert you to your drivers that need to be updated. If you've got an AMD card, it's exactly the same way that you would do it, but you would go to AMD's page, you go to their drivers, and then it would install AMD software. And that would do exactly the same as NVIDIA, checking your drivers are all up to date for you. So we can now open this. And yes, we do want it to make changes. Extraction path, that's okay. So once this has come up, you can then choose whether you just want to do the NVIDIA graphics driver, or as I said, you can do the graphics driver and the GeForce experience. That's the NVIDIA software that checks all your drivers are up to date. There's some cool things you can do with your games. It does rec screen recording as well for you. Um, but I do actually advise having the GeForce experience because it will alert you if you need to update any of your GPU drivers. So agree and continue. Now again, this is a part where you may see that your screen flickers. Don't be afraid. Um, that is very standard for when updating your graphics drivers. Okay, so that has all finished. We can close that. And this should launch the GeForce experience for us. So you can sign in. I'm not going to at the moment because I'm not gonna be using this computer, but that's all installed. So next, I just like to set up the computer to put it through its test, just so that we can see how the computer's running. So firstly, I'm going to download CPU-Z, which is a software that you can do use to um, monitor your CPU usage, that kind of thing. Um, I'm also going to get GPU-Z, and this does exactly the same, but for your GPU rather than your CPU. And we're also gonna use two programs to test, one the graphics card and one our CPU. Now, all we're doing is just making sure that the computer's gonna be running at a stable temperature and that everything's been fitted correctly. Currently running at almost idle as it is now, we're not gonna see whether there are any issues with temperatures rising too much. So I like to use on this sort of hardware, Cinebench for your CPU, and I will use Heaven for the GPU. Now obviously the new 30 series cards, if you do have those, you are gonna need a more intensive program than Heaven to use to test those out. Um, but for a 1650 Super, that should be fine for us. So while we're downloading Cinebench and Heaven, I'll just quickly show you on the GPU-Z. So on here, this showed us what graphics card we've got, um, a few more details about the memory type, that sort of thing. Uh, the sensors, so this is 
the bit that we're going to be interested in. So currently the GPU is running at 34 degrees Celsius, but we're not running any sort of intensive programs at the moment. It's also got your GPU clock and your memory clock on here. So these are the bits that we're going to be monitoring once we've got the programs running. So CPU-Z is a good way of showing the hardware that you guys have got in your system. So it's showing that we've got the Intel Core i5, what the clock speed of these are. If we then scroll along, it will show the motherboard that it's plugged into, the chipset that's on that. The memory, what we've got plugged in, so we've got 16 gigabytes of DDR4. The graphics, so it shows that we've got our 1650 Super in here as well, and that will also show the core speed on that. But to monitor the temperatures of our CPU, that is also gonna be in our GPU-Z. So under sensors, you have got your CPU temperature down here. So we're currently running at 37 degrees at pretty much idle, so that's about what I would be expecting to see currently. So first thing we're gonna do is load up Heaven. So let's do this. So we're gonna do DirectX 11, high quality, tessellation, moderate, uh, anti-analyzing times four. So system resolution, we're actually gonna do this at 1080p, just because I know that the graphics card is only gonna be used at 1080p, not in full screen, and we're going to run. Now the reason for not doing it in full screen just means that I can have this open to keep an eye on the GPU clock speeds and the GPU temperature as well. So we'll see straight away the GPU temperature is rising. Now what I'm gonna do with this is I'm just gonna leave it running probably for about 10, 15 minutes or so and see what temperatures we get up to. Okay, so it's been a little while that we've had this running now and taking a look at the GPU temperature, we're at about 67 degrees Celsius, which is pretty respectable for a two fan cooler system. Um, so we know that that's all running okay. So next we are going to try out Cinebench. Now this is going to be purely for the CPU and this is going to see how well our thermal paste is doing and how well we've actually attached our cooler to the CPU. So Cinebench you can do multi-core or single core. First of all I'm going to try multi-core because I do want to put it through its paces and I want to get the whole CPU as hot as it possibly can. So we we'll click start on that and then I'm going to let this run a couple of times. And if we bring open the temperatures here, we'll be able to keep an eye on the temperature currently running at 63 Celsius, but we'll leave that for a little bit longer and see how we get on. So we've left this going for a little while and we're now sitting at about 60 degrees Celsius. If we look at the highest reading, it was 67 degrees Celsius maximum, but the fans probably kicked in and just brought that down a little bit. So that is really, really respectable to be running Cinebench at that sort of temperature. But again, it's not a CPU that takes a lot of power. So having this sort of cooler on it, I was expecting to see results quite similar to this. So next we're going to enter our product key. So to do that, we went to go to settings system, about, and when we're on here, we will see our windows, but we, down the bottom, change the product key or upgrade your edition of windows. So let's click on that. Windows reported that no product key was found. So this is where we can change product key and we can enter the product key that we have. Activate, and windows has now been activated. So this is now a full version, paid for version of Windows. It's as easy as that. So guys, thanks for watching. If you have found this useful, do make sure you give the videos a thumbs up. It does help the video spread to more people so that they can learn how to put Windows onto their computer. Thanks for watching and as always, we will see you in the next one.